Diablo, the game that changed it all, pushing dialogue, storyline, and downtime to the backseat and bringing tense, fast-paced, real-time action to the forefront. Diablo set the standard of action RPG design for decades. Though it was by no means the first time to accelerate and streamline the RPG formula, it was by far the most popular one to do so. Diablo 2 stole that crown and pretty much outdid the original in just about every way. More classes, environments, loot, and a greater scope in environments, abilities, and combat made the first game all but obsolete. It had such a lasting attraction that the Diablo Battle Chest still landed on top 10 lists of best-selling PC games a decade after release. Many things happened between the second and third game, including a complete scrap of the original Diablo 3 prototype, and the mass leaving of the entire team that developed the first two games. So when the long-awaited Threequel arrived, this new game, from a completely different team, was, as you would expect, very different from what the fanbase anticipated. Years later, and after game-changing patches and an expansion pack, we have a much better game for it, but major differences and controversial design decisions remain. I've played all three games on both their PC and console versions, and I have clocked hundreds of hours on them in total but this will be coming from the mindset of a medium core player of both single player and multiplayer with friends. I'm making this video to go over as fairly as possible the elements Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 did better in my opinion. And with whispers of a new entry coming to the series, perhaps we can take a look at what can be learned from successes and mistakes of the past. I give you Diablo 2 versus Diablo 3. Both games have cinematics before each act, but there's a difference here. Diablo 2's cinematics focused on the Wanderer's actions and building up the anticipation for what's to come. This made way for the player to tell their story through the gameplay more so than the cinematics. Diablo 3's story was brought to life by beautiful cinematics, sadly focused on Leah's disparate story, which after lots of character development was a letdown when she became the titular antagonist in a surprise Act 4. Though both games feature solid and well-produced soundtracks, most gamers would agree that Matt Ullman's haunting, high-reverb combination of soft choir, low piano keys, and famous guitar riffs of the first two games is Diablo Incarnate. While turning the music off for Diablo 2, I noticed something interesting. I could hear a draft of wind in some areas, faint screams and echoes of things off in the distance, the patter of footsteps all around the environment, and the slight burning sound of a nearby torch. All these things are minor overall, but really added a sense of space and atmosphere to the game. Diablo 2's tone was pitch black. Reading about the horror stories and untold evils that have plagued the world many times over, stories of baths of virgin blood, gore-painted arenas, and putrid enemies, the sense of lingering horror was paramount. On the other hand, Diablo 3's tone is all over the place. You have biblical corruption yarns, loot goblins, fallen angels, and butterfly witches. The graphic style also clearly took some visual cues from the more pleasant and agreeable World of Warcraft graphics, with rounder shapes, brighter colors, and softer edges. And so it came to pass that the Countess, who once bathed in the rejuvenating blood of a hundred virgins, was buried alive. And her castle, in which so many cruel deeds took place, fell rapidly into ruin. Rising over the buried dungeons in that godforsaken wilderness, a solitary tower, like some monument to evil, is all that remains. The Countess's fortune was believed to be divided among the clergy, although some say that more remains unfound, still buried alongside the rotting skulls that bear mute witness to the inhumanity of the human creature. With a thicker and more unique atmosphere, with a story that stays out of your way, Diablo 2 takes this one hands down. Always a focal point of the Diablo series, loot could be found in chests, be bought at stores, or drop off enemies with thousands of combinations of magical effects. I feel the rarity and power algorithm in Diablo 2 was just about right where rare and legendary items were just uncommon enough to seem valuable, but not too frequent so as to lose importance and become boring. You could also penny pinch, sell items at stores and save up to buy a good item at the shops or gamble on an item of unknown value at certain vendors. Conversely, Diablo 3 started out downright loot-starved in its original release, 
After playing it for dozens of hours, I never organically received a single legendary item, only to go buy a few in the broken economy of the auction house. Blizzard later realized the error of their ways and in my opinion overcorrected that. They killed the auction house and made item drops way, way more generous, making it commonplace in later levels to see two, sometimes three legendaries drop off a single creature. Shops are made pretty useless in three as well, being that almost all items sell for a similar, lowly price and sell mostly lower end items, making crafting your only non-combat option for better loot. There were lots of little mechanics in two that were removed in three, like keys to unlock certain chests and needing lots of time portal and identify scrolls of having some sort of risk reward or trade for identifying items, and I stand by that concept as being a solid one, but after a while it does become rote. Diablo 3 removes these consumables, making the concept of identifying an item sort of pointless. Diablo 2 had a plethora of potions of all types and sizes, and there were also a couple of potions that were pretty useless for the most part, such as ones for stamina and thawing. Diablo 3 removed all potions entirely, with only a single cooldown based potion in its stead. It incentivized passive skill build and item-based restoration. It also introduced health orbs that drop from enemies. This arcade game-like design philosophy was stated during development interviews as well. Probably the most bewildering mechanic introduced in Diablo 2 was the stamina bar, or how I like to call it, the jog blocker. Very little was developed around it, so it really became a limiter to progression for no reason. Running drained stamina, whereas walking or waiting or drinking stamina potions refilled it. That's it. Pretty useless. Despite my misgivings with the loot system and the now pointless identification, I'd have to say this one overall goes to Diablo 3. Every level you gained in Diablo 2 gave you attribute points to permanently enhance the core statistics of your character. Similarly with the skill tree, one must spend points to gain skills and unlock new ones at specific level milestones. Diablo 3 did away with choice of progression altogether, with only tiny improvements added late game with a patch, and made skills switchable on the fly once unlocked by level only. This means that every character at each level is more or less identical, save for loadout and equipment. On one hand, the idea of experimenting with lots of active abilities, variants, and passives is good fun and can keep combat and exploring your character's abilities fresh and fun. On the other, it handles more like the loadout system of a modern multiplayer shooter than an RPG where you would make permanent choices that decide the future of your character's specialty. As far as skill customization goes, Diablo 3 certainly has a wider selection of skill variants, although a portion become obsolete when compared to others. Despite this though, many players report that there are only a couple viable late game builds for each class, claiming that there are more potentially useful builds in Diablo 2. This is compounded by the simplification of item stats primarily into a few core attributes, with a big DPS value shown on all weapons rather than needing to get into the nitty gritty of what the item does. This is also due to a huge difference between the way the games handle weapons. In Diablo 2, weapons were generally your default attack and you'd use it as you might think. You shoot arrows, you throw throwing knives, you slash with swords, etc. Your weapon was your mana-free backup attack for all classes, and a primary staple for melee builds. In Diablo 3 though, your vanilla weapon attack is basically unused. It is replaced by a growing set of mana-free abilities that turn what would be a bow and arrows into a jar of spiders, a spear into a lightning strike, a mace into a fireball. You get the idea. All abilities become simply greater or lower percentages of your weapon damage. This single-handedly makes your weapon the most important factor of your entire character. Diablo 2's late game damage and effect numbers run into the hundreds and eventually low thousands. Diablo 3 gets decidedly more exponential and gets into the billions for seemingly no other reasons but to be impressive. Also, for a game that prides itself for being streamlined, how you determine your actual damage based on your stats and weapons is a bit like voodoo, and you just have to trust the game's stat increase up or down arrow to tell if it will improve your character, rather than scrutinize an item's particular effects. There are many more types of slotted item fillers such as jewels, which are similar to Diablo 3's legendary gems later on, runes, which could be combined in unique ways to make powerful rune words, and more, which were simplified in Diablo 3 for a five color gem system. There were also charms, which would give you a buff in exchange for cluttering up your inventory. The end result of all this is pretty clear though. In Diablo 2, you would tailor your equipment loadout around your permanently developed character. In Diablo 3, you tailor your character ability loadout around your all-powerful equipment. 
Though I love the skill variance and amount of choice 3 presents you, the loadout system breaks the immersion of building a character, and the DPS-focused design turns the game into an exercise in number building. Diablo 2 wins this round. This is an obvious one, but when you make a game a decade later, you're going to have much more power to work with and much more advanced tools, engines, and previous experience at your fingertips as a developer. Diablo 2 was a little behind the times even in 2000, with a retention of fairly low-res 2D sprites and fixed resolutions. All the while running at a choppy 25 frames per second, Diablo 3 has higher frame rates, resolutions, and true polygonal graphics, making for a more visually pleasing game and more responsive combat. Work was also done to the UI and key mapping, allowing more abilities to be used with a single button press, rather than the frantic switching of your right-click ability using the F keys or mouse wheel that Diablo 2 suffered. The idea that all your characters are bound to your account and have shared storage too makes for a much more seamless experience as well. Diablo 3's always online nature defended against cheaters much better, but because of that, it cannot be played offline even if going it solo. That also means that modding or custom campaigns that have been made for the original two games are nigh impossible for the third entry at this time. Strangely too, because of the online nature of Diablo 3, trading has been severely hindered due to legendary items and higher level gems being account bound, which has drawn ire from the old school community. Now that the servers work, and due to the huge technological leaps between the two games, I'll have to say that this one goes to Diablo 3. In the end, Diablo 2 and 3 were products of a different era, with much different scopes, timeframes, budgets, and team sizes. Diablo 3 has benefited from all of those differences, and in many ways comes out the better game due to the sheer amount of professional man-hours and technological improvements put into it. It's flashier, new player-friendly, and is much more focused on end-game activities, and that's definitely paid off. But for old-school Diablo fans like myself, who do not have the benefit of being new to the franchise, there's something just a little bit off about it. Is it the glossy, feel-good sheen it has, ignoring its grimmer roots? Is it the self-aware loot frenzy the game has evolved into, where it's become a grab bag game for shinies? Or is it the fact that the eccentricities and technicalities of ability, item, and stats have been worn down and polished to a point where you just have to chase the big DPS values and increase the sea of damage numbers to survive? Whatever it is, the reality is pretty clear to me that the game I'd recommend to new players would undoubtedly be Diablo 3, as it is technically proficient, streamlined, and immediately rewarding. However, I personally feel that the crown of action RPGs still resides atop Diablo 2's head, where it had innovated a genre for decades to come, and Rough Edges or Not is still to date the prime example of the genre. Perhaps a mix of the things each got right would result in the perfect action RPG. What do you think? Please share your thoughts of these games and the action RPG genre as a whole. I'd love to discuss with you. Thanks for watching.